This is the motto of the show, Hour of the Truth. Rome never changes. They used to call us heretics and sent the Inquisition to kill us. Today they call us terrorists and send on their crusades. Times and methods may have changed, the goal still stays the same. Extirpate the remnant of the true word of God, Bible believing people. Suffering at the hands of Rome Cause they believed in Christ alone They died through Europe, especially Spain For they saw all but Christ is vain He suffered by His death for men To save them from their awful sin Six hundred years of martyred saints that history cannot erase with iron heel and iron hand the Roman popes rule the land those ignorant of history may be swept into apostasy we won't be loved by Rome, sweet lie with fifty million reasons why salvation is by faith alone in christ alone by grace alone a sovereign god give faith to man salvation's in the maker's hand this gospel offends rome today they offer up Another way, a counterfeit, a compromise Beware the ancient papal lie With such a cloud of witnesses Who by grace died in their Lord Recall their memory to say By the same faith we live today Hello everybody and welcome to a new video from Jörg, Juggler 66, Hour of the Truth on the second channel, War on Disinformation. Today I've come to the table on the 27th of June, this evening, on the Wednesday evening, to come and read to you the 37th part of the wonderful book History of the Inquisition by Philip von Limborch, which is an incredible book when you really get to understand it. and. Um, on the PDF count page, we are about page 250, 260, something of 750, 750, so we are only about one third through the book up to now. And we are speaking about the time when the Inquisition was founded, was put into the world in the beginning of the 13th century, and uh, where it flourished and where it didn't flourish. That was last time. Well, this time I have not so good news. This time we will probably read about where it did flourish. And let's go just back to the reading and understand that we are, as I said, on page 255 of 746, 87 in the book. Still the second volume, of course, of this wonderful work. The more happy and speedy progress of the Inquisition that is chapter 15 called. And we read here, thus far the Pope had labored hard in promoting the affair of the Inquisition. But as there were perpetual quarrels between the popes and the emperor, the pope's success was not answerable to his wishes, as being more intent upon promoting war than inquiring into and judging of heresies. But after the death of Emperor Frederick, the affairs of Germany begin um, the affairs of Germany being in greater disorder, and Italy without any prince. Antichrist Pope Innocent IV, seeing all things become subject to his power in the Milanese and other Paris and other parts of Italy, <coughs> <coughs> determined to extirpate all heresies which had greatly increased in the preceding war. And because the Dominican and Franciscan friars had greatly afflict, uh, afflicted the Pope against heretics, 
and were animated with a fiery zeal, he committed this affair to them, rather than to any others whatsoever. He therefore erected a tribunal solely for the business of the faiths, and gave to the inquisitors perpetual power to administer judgment in his name in this cause. We have to understand what this means. This means that this tribunal that was going from village to village all over Europe with the Inquisition, and the head of the Inquisition of this every tribunal, had the same power as the Pope had. The Pope infested in him the same power that he has, or that he thinks to have, <laughs> that he professes to have. Yeah? Stolen power. Power given to the Pope by, by whom? Well, when we go to Revelation chapter 13, we know that the power was given, the power, the seat and great authority was given by the dragon. The dragon, the serpent, the old serpent, the devil, also called, as we read in Revelation 12 verse 9. Yeah? And this power has been given to the, uh, to the inquisitors. They have quote-unquote carte blanche in their judgment over people when they go from village to village. His first and principal care, the author continues, was to purge Italy from heresy, which was nearest to himself and mostly subject to his power, and therefore he erected several tribunals of the Inquisition therein. In the year 1251 he created Vivianus Bergomensis and Peter of Verona, both friars predicant, inquisitors of the faith in Milan, and gave them these letters in which he taxes even the Emperor Frederick as a favorer of heresy. Innocent and so on. Yeah? And speaking about Antichrist, Pope Innocent. Whilst that persidious tyrant lived, we could not so freely proceed against this plague, especially in Italy, through his opposition, who instead of putting any check to it, rather encouraged it. When he became evidently suspected of this, was condemned by us in the Council of Lyon, as well as on account on his, on this, on his many other enormous excesses. And therefore we strictly command and enjoin our discretion. By these our apostolic writings, as you expect the remission of your sins, that ye prosecute this affair of the faith, which lies principally upon our heart, with all our powers and with, servant mi and with fervent minds, and that ye go personally to Cremona, since we have thought proper, since we have thought proper to depute from the same business other discreet persons in other cities and places of Lombardy and that after having called a council in that diocese, ye do carefully and effectually labor to extirpate heretical pravity out of that city and its district, and that, is, and that if you find any persons culpable upon this account, meaning heresy, or infected or defamed, unless upon examination they will absolutely obey the commands of the church, ye proceed against them, their receivers, abettors and favorers, by the apostolic authority, according to the canonical sanctions, laying aside all fear of men, and that, if there be need, ye call into your assistance the secular arm, dated in the Ides of June, the 18th year of our pontificate. The very most important part of the sentence, uh, of this whole reading here up to now, is of course in this quote, is of course in the last sentence. And if there be need, ye call into the assistance the secular arm. Now, why is that important? Well, because it gives us an other, another confirmation of how the spiritual power rules the temporal power. So the spiritual power is this tribunal of the Inquisition that goes from village to village and extirpates so-called heretics. Yeah? That's one thing. 
and they use the civil power to execute their judgments. So this spiritual tribunal is set up and will yeah <laughs> question <laughs> I mean that's that's where the term inquisition comes from yeah from questioning yeah it's an inquisitory office yeah inquisitory means questioning right they question the people and then they will judge them and the execute uh, and and the execution of these judgments if they cannot do it for themselves they will be helped by the secular power so the secular power is subject to the spiritual power and it is in no way any different still today in the year 2018 you know it has always been this way and especially with countries who haven't concorded with the Roman Catholic Canon Church they agree that the spiritual power is above the temporal and we see that already here in the 13th century quite interesting and if there be need he call into your assistance the secular arm. This Peter of Verona appointed that amongst other statutes of the Republic of Milan, many also should be made and observed against heretical pravity. But as he was going from Carmo to Milan in the year 1252 to extirpate heresy, a certain believer of heretics attacked him in his journey and dispatched him with many wounds. He was canonized after his death by Antichrist Alexander IV and is worshipped as a martyr by the Dominicans, whom next to Dominic they esteem as the patron and prince of the holy office of the Inquisition, since he was the first who consecrated it by his blood. The ministers also of the Inquisition, which they call in Italy cross-bearers, are from him called co-brothers of Peter the martyr and in the very ensigns of, of this office he is painted as a martyr and protector of this sacred tribunal with a silken cross of a red color interwoven with gold as the emblem of his martyrdom. But lest the Pope should seem wholly to deprive the bishops of the power of judging concerning the faith with which hitherto had been wholly lodged with them, he appointed that the bishop with the inquisitor should be judges in his tribunal. But the bishop was admitted only for form's sake. The whole power of judging lay wholly in the inquisitor, and that there might be some sh uh, that there might be some show of authority left to the civil magistrates, who, by the last laws of Frederick, had the power of pronouncing sentence upon heretics. He allowed them to appoint ministers to the inquisition of the inquisition, but such number uh, but such only as were nominated by the inquisitors, and to depute one of their number, nominated also by the inquisitor, to visit with them the uh, territory committed to him, and of claiming the third part of the confiscated goods, together with some other things of like nature, by which the secular magistrate seemed indeed to be admitted as a companion of the inquisitors, but was in reality rendered their slave and tool. For he was obliged, at the command of the Inquisitor, to apprehend anyone and to imprison him wherever the Inquisitor pleased. He was also under an oath to expel, from him, to expel him from his family, and not to admit into any office any that should be adjudged heretics by the Inquisitor's sentence. And if any of his number assisted the inquisitors, they were put under an oath of secrecy. <laughs> we know all of the oath of secrecy in the Roman Catholic Church, right? And the Jesuits, of course. From all which it is manifested that the magistrates were not the companions of the inquisitors in that tribunal, but only their slaves and tools. The magistrates were not the companions of the Inquisitor in that tribunal, but only their slaves and tools. The secular power is the slave and tool of the spiritual power. This is what this says. The Pope also ordained that all persons should pay toward the charge, towards the charges of the jails, imprisonments and support of those 
who were confined. By this means the office of making inquisition against heretics was in diverse places of Italy committed both to the minors and predicant friars. But least their mutual power and the neighboring just jurisdic uh, jurisdiction of the places should create confusion or raise disputes about their respective bounds, the Pope recalled all the commissions that had been granted in the affair of the, of the faith, and divided in an, exact, in an exact proportion to each order the several parts of Italy. The friars minor he appointed in the city of Rome, throughout Tuscany, in the patrimony of St. Peter, the duchy of Spoleto, Campania, Maritamo and Romania. To the predicants he assigned Lombardy, Romanolia and the Marquisate of Tarivino and Genova. The bull in which he commits the office of the Inquisition to the predicants is in Bsovius, Anno 1254, paragraph 4, and that to the minors in Luke Wedding, Anno 1254, paragraph 7. After this, the Pope prescribed 31 articles to the magistrates, judges and people of the three countries which he had subjected to the jurisdiction of the predicants, which he commanded to be exactly observed and registered amongst the public records, and gave power to the inquisitors to put under excommunication and interdict all who refused to observe them. Armed with this power, they sometimes very insolently abused it, and attempted to introduce into other countries that the Pope had ordered only for those that he had put under their particular jurisdiction. Upon this account, in the year 1255, there was a great quarrel between Anselm, a predicted friar from the, in the Milanese, and, uh, and the magistrate of Genova. The friar, that we speak of here, Anselm, the friar endeavoured that some constitutions made against heretics, both by the apostolic see and the imperial power, should be published and reposited amongst the laws of the city. But Philip Turianus, per prefect of the city, refused it, either because he favoured heretics or despised the commands of the inquisitor. Upon this the friar, supported by the apostolic authority, proceeded against Philip as suspect of heresy, and because he refused to obey and appear excommunicated him, and all his companions in the government as accomplices in the crime, and interdicted the city from all holy services. You know, this means that when the city is interdicted from all holy services, that means that no... Um, uh, no citizen of that city could get any sacraments anymore. The sacrament of the Mass was taken away, the sacrament of the Last Unction was taken away, the sacrament of Baptism for children was taken away, of uh, baptizing uh, uh, grown-ups anyway. In the Roman Catholic Church they only baptize children, <laughs> normally. And, um, you know, the transubstantiation, the visiting of the Mass, and, and all that stuff was taken away when you are interdicted. And here they interdicted a whole city from all holy services. <coughs> what will happen then, most of the time? Of course, the people will rise up, because the people are deprived of their salvation, out of, uh, which is out of the Holy Church, nowhere to be found, the Roman Catholic Church teaches. Yeah? And this is a way to get the people to revolt when you put the whole city uh, into an interdict. Now Philip, under that censure, appealed to the Apostolic See and sent ambassadors to the Pope to entreat a suspension of the censures and to wait for the determination of the whole affair. The Pope suspended the curves, uh, the curses, sorry, the Pope suspended the curses Anselm had pronounced to a certain day. But before that day came, Philip obeyed the commands of Anselm, registered according to his order all those constitutions amongst the city laws, and proceeded as they directed against all contravenous. Thus, the author continues, thus the city magistrate was sometimes or sometimes forced to yield to the papal authority.
And this undoubtedly was the reason that the laws of Frederick against heretics were, as Friar Bernard of Como relates in his Light of the Inquisitors, printed at Rome in 1584, registered in the records of the city Como and accepted by the whole council of that city on September 10, 1255. Nevertheless, upon account of the, uh, of the excessive cruelty of the inquisitors and the greatness of the expense, the people were violently set against this tribunal, and some of the popes could fierce, uh, could, yeah, could, could scarce, sorry, and some of the popes could scarce extricate themselves out of these difficulties, till at length the people admitted it more easily being eased of the expenses they had borne to, the support, to support the Inquisition, and because the episcopal authority in that tribunal was greatly enlarged. Sometimes, however, they broke out into open violence, which was with great difficulty appeased. Thus it happened in the country of Parma, as Honorius the Fourth relates it in his letter to the bishop of that city, extant in Psovius. These difficulties were indeed overcome by the authority of the Pope and rigor of punishments, but contrary to the inclinations and endeavors of the, pope, of the people who cursed the cruelty of the Inquisitors. From some countries where the Inquisition had been brought in, it was driven out again, because it assumed the recognizance of those affairs which did not belong to it, so that the people could no longer bear the intolerable yoke. And Jesus Christ said to pick up your cross and pick up my yoke, because my yoke is easy, right? Ah, and the yoke of man and the yoke of the Roman Catholic Church is intolerable. In these latter ages, speaking of 1518, the most violent tumults were raised in Brescia against the Inquisitors, who exercised the most outrageous cruelties against some persons accused of magic, which were very difficult, uh, which were di very um, difficultly appeased, and not till the ecclesiastical tribunal and processes were abolished and other judges appointed in their room. Upon the death of Paul the Fifth, uh, Paul the Fourth, sorry, speaking of Pope Paul the Fourth, upon the death of Pope Paul the Fourth, the prisons of the Inquisition were broke o broken op broke open by the mob at Rome and the whole building, with all its records, were burned to the ground. At Mantua, in uh, 1568, there was, on the same account, a violent sedition which brought the city itself to the extremest danger. As there occurred to these new judges many cases, not determined by the laws, so that sometimes they were in doubt how to proceed, they referred them to the Pope by whom they were deputed, who by his rescripts gave them proper directions and declared how they were to pronounce in like cases. There are extant many such answers of Antichrist Innocent IV, Alexander IV, Urban IV and Clement IV to the Inquisitors, instructing them in the affair of their office against heretics. And although these rescripts were sent only to the Italian inquisitors, yet we must not think, as Pegna remarks, that these decrees were to be observed in Italy only. Quote, For the Roman pontiffs transmitted their rescripts to the inquisitors of Italy, because at that time there were many of them against the prevailing heresies of the Patrinus, Paterinus, Puritans, Leonists, and other heretics, who chiefly infected the parts of Italy, Italy. the heresies of the Valdenses, a poor min of the or poor men of Lyon. Uh, this is also their other name, the poor men of Lyon, being almost buried and extinguished. The Apostolic See, having a little before suppressed them in Languedoc, Dauphiny, and Provence by the preaching of many famous men, and especially of St. Dominic. And therefore the rescript sent by the popes to those inquisitors, they ordered to be observed by the inquisitors of other provinces, where there were, where there were any. They were sent first 
to those of Italy because they especially needed that provision and those constitutions. On May, uh, one may also read in the bolts of the same. Uh, one may also read in the bolts same. Same laws. What is that here? Same laws. Yeah. One may also read in the bolts the same laws often repeated without any alteration by different antichrists or popes. For, as the same Pegna observes, quote, it seems to have been an ancient custom when the matter required it that every pope in the beginning of his pontificate should publish laws against heretics and rebels against the churches at the church to deter them from too great a crime by the severity of punishments and penalties, and thus reduce them to the bosom of the Church. Sometimes they publish the laws received by their predecessors, without altering a word, unless the occasion required otherwise. This must be an end of the quote. This tribunal was merely ecclesiastical, the civil magistrate having no share in the judgment. The inquisitor, with the bishop, pronounced sentence of heresy against the person apprehended. They appointed wholesome penances to the penitent and delivered over the impatient and obstinate to the secular court, who, without any farther deliberation, condemned them to the fire, meaning the stake. And this brings us already to the conclusion of this chapter. I thought when I started reading today that I was going to read two chapters because I knew it was not such a long one but I have to tell you I'm not feeling this well and my eyes are not working this perfectly for the moment as you may be heard from my reading and um, I rather uh, opt out to stop here for today and will continue in the next chapter with the 38 reading of this wonderful book History of the Inquisition by Philip von Limborch. I hope I didn't butcher the text too much today because it really was not easy for me. But anyway, I'm looking forward to the next one, looking forward to your comments. And uh, let us continue next time in the 38th session of the reading of this book, History of the Inquisition. And until then, Maranatha. <laughs>